What is going on, everybody? The real Sharif M here, aka Mangana Steel, and I wanted to do a little something different for the next like series of videos. I kind of wanted to do a bit of a designer showcase and then do a kind of overview of each one of their designs. Now, I've already done a discussion about this guy. This is the OG Pena Lanny's clip, and this is really the knife that made me fall in love with uh, modern knife designs. And it, this is one of my most prized possessions, actually. Uh, this was a gift from a friend, and I absolutely love this thing. It's one of my favorite designs ever. Um, and, you know, if you're interested in it, just go take a look at my previous videos. I did a bit of a design breakdown. This knife is the one that made me, like, fall in love with Enrique Pena. And it's really funny for a guy like myself who kind of veers more towards like avant-garde designs. Pena has a very classical aesthetic and he is a traditional slip joint maker. Uh, and he actually holds the slip joint guys up as like his gold standard. So it's very interesting that again, a guy like me who goes for more of the avant-garde really is attracted to Pena's work. Um, and clearly, <laughs> uh, I, I am a very, very big fan of his stuff. So for this particular video, I wanted to jump into this guy. This is the Pena Mula, and this is his drop point version, and another one of his that I absolutely love to death. Uh, I do carry this. I do use it every now and again um, versus this guy, which is more of like a safe queen just for nostalgic purposes, not because it's expensive or anything like that. Although it is discontinued, you can't get that one anymore. Uh, this guy is one of the only Peñas that I have that's not a bolster lock, but I love it because it is like a scaled down tactical knife and every part of the construction tells you that it's got just the titanium uh, handle titanium scales nice backspacer it has the stop pin right across the back here which hopefully the camera is focusing on there you go uh which gives you this sort of like lock up uh or uses the the shoulder or, or heel i don't know what you want to call this very edge of the blade to achieve a very strong lock up has a nice drop point blade that's almost like saber ground i don't know if you really want to call it like a true saber uh, but it has this beautiful swedge here that does help it with piercing uh, and it's just a beautiful beautiful knife to behold personally like every detail is executed really well you have this nice wide flat spot up here so that you can choke up get a nice like solid four finger grip for push cutting and stuff like that beautifully executed thumb studs nice little ramp here for your thumb to fall on and really is just an excellently designed knife through and through. Uh, it's absolutely one of my favorites. And it just shows to me the attention to detail and proportions really ultimately gets you some of the best looking and most useful knife designs. Uh, actually, to be 100% frank, my Kubi Ruckus was inspired by this to some degree. If you look at it, it's definitely much more within my aesthetic, but the core elements of the design are not too dissimilar. And even in our construction, with using the stop pin across the back, this is 
part of what Bob Trezola talked about when he you know, wrote his book about designing tactical knives. And that is very clear in the construction of this knife as well. And it's what I employed. I just went a little ham with using a five mil stop pin. <laughs> but overall, this is a beautiful knife, nicely thin ground. Um, it's about three millimeters, if I'm not mistaken. And that translates to, I always forget this, but translates to 0.138 inches. Yeah, 0.13, it's actually almost three and a half millimeters uh, because it's like 0.138, almost like 0.14, depending on like where you put your calipers on. But it is a beautifully designed knife, runs on bearings, is almost drop shutty. Just like mine, when you do this construction here, a lot of people were impressed with the ruckus. They were like, oh, it's got a front flipper. It's not an intentional front flipper. And if you haven't watched my video about uh, I designed a knife where I talk about the thought process behind the ruckus, go check it out. But when you do tactical knives like this, to some degree, depending on how you design this portion of the knife, uh, you will get some element of this like sticking out a bit. And people say, oh yeah, that's a front flipper. It's not an intentional front flipper. It's just how you get the best geometry for the lockup. So if you think about the stop pin being here, that triangulating to the center of the pivot and down to the bottom of the lock bar and that creating a triangle, you do inevitably end up with just a little bit extra right here. And that, that's just the nature of the game. So this thing was manufactured by Riot. Actually, if I'm not mistaken, all of his uh, X series are manufactured by Riot and they are absolutely wonderful. Uh, this guy is what? Let's bring out the calipers again. Do, 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 zero it out. This guy has a blade length of... I want to say just over three inches. Yeah, like maybe 3.15 inches. Uh, so for my hands, it's not a four finger knife. It's like a three and a half finger, uh, as you can see there. And I say it in every one of my videos, so I may as well say it again. I wear a extra large to a double extra large glove. So for my hands, it's not like a, a full four finger knife, but you know, for me, I just add this little bit of a lanyard here to kind of like fill out the back part of my hand. And this thing just sits beautifully. Very useful for everyday tasks. Very, very nice. Um, just a beautiful knife to own. And this is, part of my collection of knives that I will never sell. One of my favorite subtle details is this nice little brass ring surrounding the pivots. I wish we would see more of that. I think it's a very classy detail and if done well, really just adds a little something to the knife. The overall design flow of the knife is really, really nice. It sits in the like pocket so well kind of disappears uh doesn't have a deep carry clip but i'm actually not a big crazy guy on deep carry i like having a little something to actually extract my knives out of and in that sense i'm a little bit more like the old school uh knife designers um and in that sense he actually did that really beautifully with the transition here of this flat surface and how that goes, it's actually like the perfect amount to just get your index finger and your thumb on the opposite side and just extract it. Um, 
overall, I don't know, really know what else to say about this other than it's one of my all-time favorite knives. And I remember in the beginning, some people were saying they were having some trouble deploying it because of the lock bar. Uh, but I've never really had an issue with that, as I've demonstrated in this video uh, several times. Uh, I just don't put pressure on the clip or the lock bar. I just kind of pull down or into my grip against the, um, the pocket clip, and it fires every time consistently. And you can slow roll it. It's just, it's one of those um, bearing action knives with thumb studs where it doesn't feel like it's too loose. There's good tension on the detent, which ensures that really when you slow roll it, it feels almost like a perfectly broken in um, uh, uh, bushing knife. And if you really want it to like kind of fire out it does with authority and if you want to like have it drop shut it's real close it's real close to like perfectly drop shutty so i don't know man this is just for me another example of enrique pena like knocking it out of the park uh if you guys are interested in how thick this is comes in at 0.47 inches so it's a little bit on the thinner side than a lot of the stuff that i design uh, but i do have to say it really fits well in the grip it doesn't move it doesn't kind of rotate around it's just every element of this knife has been executed exceedingly well uh, which i expect no less from enrique pena so, hope you guys like this little look at the at, and you know my opinions on the Pena Mula. If you guys can find one second hand and the prices aren't outrageous, I highly recommend picking one up. It is a absolutely wonderful knife, and I definitely this is like if you wanted a one and done, and it fit your hands and it felt comfortable. I have no problems recommending this. This is this is one that will last you for ages. Absolutely. So, all right, guys. Uh, check out the next videos. I will be talking about the Pena Lanny's Clip Front Flipper and the Trapper. And I can't remember the name of this guy, but we'll talk about that one too. All right. Take care, and I'll catch you in the next one.